everyone to the Light and Life podcast, conversations on faith and life here in downtown Colorado Springs. I'm your host again here with Pastor Tim. Hey, Liza Cunningham. How are you doing? <laughs> doing well. How are you? Host. The hostess. The hostess. hostess. With the mostess. With the mostess of the Light and Life podcast. Mm-hmm. I used yeah. to be a host at a restaurant. Really? Yes. And I always was confused. Was I the host or the hostess? Yeah. Was it sort of a... You know, like... A, that was controversial in your time? I guess so. It yeah. was. Like, okay. you, you didn't know what to say. Yeah. I was... My, right this way. I was a host... One of my first jobs was host at the Olive Garden. That's amazing. That's is... the best news I've heard all day. <laughs> that makes me see you in a whole new light. That's how I learned pastoral ministry, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> but this was the era when Olive Garden in Colorado Springs was like the thing to do. And you might not know that there was an era when Olive Garden was the thing to do, but there was. That so sounds like an awesome era. Take me there. It was great. <laughs> like soup, salad, and breadsticks. Yeah. Right. And just... And so... The, the lines, like the wait, I mean, I once was telling people, it'll be an hour and a half. <laughs> and to try to hide or try to get them to leave. No, it was going to be an hour would. and a half. Yeah, oh, like, yeah, I totally didn't sh- overestimate wait times <laughs> to get people to leave. <laughs> Never did that. That's crazy. <laughs> so yeah. you'd say it'll be an hour and a half and... Yeah, I mean, it was, it was crazy. Popping. It was crazy. And then they'd be so mad at you and, you know, then... I just thought, I th- think I need to go into ministry. Well, let me ask you this. Yeah. My family has an ongoing debate um, whether, like, if, if you could eat one of these two restaurants for the rest of your life for every meal, okay, what would it be? Yeah. Olive Garden or Chili's? Oh. Oh. That's pretty tough, actually. It's the yeah. only... I, I feel like there's a, a right answer. Really? Yeah. It's Chili's. <laughs> <laughs> Chili's is the right answer. Probably is because you can get spaghetti at Chili's. Yeah, you can get whatever you want at Chili's. Yeah. Okay. But I would, if I could go back to the 1990s mm. at the height of Olive Garden prosperity, <laughs> I would probably choose yeah. that. No, nothing feels more like family. But it's, Olive I, I'm going to go ahead and say that Olive Garden has, has lost the handle on quality. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm now. Going out there, going out there on a limb. In the day, you might have picked Olive Garden, In the but day, today, yeah. you feel confident. But today, it'd be Chili's. It'd be Chili's. Folks, feel free to comment right. <laughs> your favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Chili's or Olive Garden. Um, anyway, last week was Easter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As this podcast hits you, we have we'll have been through Easter. and um, So, yeah, I thought it'd be fun to just ask, what's your, what is your favorite Easter thing? Ooh. I... I think since I've lived in Colorado Springs, my favorite is sharing a meal with my friends in their pastels and oh. <laughs> and knowing why we're celebrating. Okay. Um, but I think in yeah, the yeah. past, my family would dye Easter eggs and play yeah. egg schmear where, oh. I don't know, if, I feel like we've talked about this before. Maybe not. Was one of them hard-boiled or something? Yes. So they're all hard-boiled eggs, except we would throw in some non-hard-boiled uh. eggs. And we'd go into this big pit behind my house and just hit them with baseball bats. We'd, okay. We'd pitch them to each other and hit them every once in a while. It was always my little sister, Laura, who would get pitched a raw egg. And she would hit it, and just we have yolk all over ourselves. And we just... Laughed and laughed and laughed. Nice. So that's my favorite, I think, Easter tradition. But yeah. I think my favorite part about Easter is a shared a shared yeah. meal after a church service or a sunrise service, yeah. even yeah, if yeah, you yeah. will, like we do here. Yeah, yeah. What about you? Um, okay, yeah, there's a couple levels, right? I mean, there's the Cad- <laughs> there's the Cadbury egg level. Totally. Right? Totally. Which oh, I forgot about the Reese's egg. The Reese's egg. I'm up I'm on team Reese's. Yeah, I Cadbury egg used to be a thing back back again. It still is. I mean, it is, but for me personally, gotcha. That's a sugar bomb these days. Okay. Like back when I was someone who used to eat a Snickers bar and drink <laughs> six cokes a day. That's awesome. Then you know, eating a Cadbury egg or two was just like another something else in the mix. Yeah, why not? Now it's like I should probably get one for the spring. <laughs> for the entire season. <laughs> and like really think about the uh-huh. right time to, to enjoy it. When is the right time? Is it Easter Day? Actually, no, I think it's actually like Easter Monday uh. after they go on sale. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> that was the most, like, dadism yep. thing that you could have said. I'm settled in. Yeah. I'm committed. <laughs> you really did. I've gone down that road. <laughs> There's no going back. <laughs> Yep. I would rather buy one for 25 cents that's got the big red sticker on it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, yeah. Easter time. So love, we've been talking about love and thought we would talk about love and the cross. Love on perfect. the cross. Love on the cross. So why did Jesus die on the cross? The kid's answer is always Jesus died on the cross to show us how much he loves us. And um, which is... You know, as a kid, that makes perfect sense, kind of. Mm -hmm. As you grow up, you sort of wonder, like, what? Um, what does that really mean? What does that really mean? Yeah. Yeah. So last time, I think it was, it was last time or two times ago, we chucked around Gary Chapman's five love languages. Yeah, we botched them a little bit, but I we think them. <laughs> for the most part, yep. we got them right. <laughs> I think we came up with seven and then settled back down on four. <laughs> and, um, yeah. But there's five. There's five. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He names five. Do you want to? Sure. There's acts of service, physical touch, words of affirmation, giving gifts, and quality time. Yeah. And what was yours again? Well, so apparently you give and you receive them differently. So I would say. Yes. Okay. I am a big quality time kind of gal. Okay. I, I like to receive quality time. Um, and I think. Acts of service are important to me too. They're all important. I'm I'm all the things. But I think Yeah, you wouldn't want to say take this one off the list and never do it. Right. Right. But, but you would but the mm -hmm. way that you most feel loved is quality time. Mm hmm And then what's the way that you most easily express love? I think I express love through I think giving gifts sounds surface level. And that's not what I mean by gift giving. I think I feel like I'm loving someone when something makes me think of them. If I just stumble upon it at a store, or um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I'll randomly get something because it made me think of them, and then I give it to them. And do you hold it until the right next time, or do you just give it? No, I just like, give it to you, them. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's not for like a it excludes birthdays or you know times that are you know gifts are expected. Right. I think. That comes easily to me. And I think receiving gifts also, that's how I view it. I don't view yeah. it as like an expectation. I think it's like, oh, this made someone think of me and vice versa. Yeah. Am I making sense? It is, yeah. yeah what yeah, are yeah. yours? I mean, and I just named basically all of them. I'm not very good at giving words of affirmation. Okay. I yep. think I'm a shower, not a, a sayer. Yeah. But I need to be told. Yeah. It's weird. It's complex. <laughs> I don't know how it makes sense, but well, I mean, the big thing is, yeah, you've got, <laughs> um, you've got your way of, of feeling loved, mm -hmm. and um, so if you don't, if you're trying to show, if and you're the person that your, uh, your your partner, your wife, your spouse, your husband, that you, that that is your person that you're trying to express love to, and if you don't know how they receive love. You could be doing all kinds of things. You could be bringing them flowers and bringing gifts and grabbing a gift that made this made me think of you, and they're they're just like, okay, so <laughs> what? Like, <laughs> right, I, right. Yeah, but this, the, I think that's what prompted the the conversation of the five love languages last time was saying that people love each other differently because they, you know, if there's no yeah. baseline, they're trying to love people how they want to receive it. Right. And if but, you think about it, in theory, that it, that makes sense and that's good. Like, love people how you want to be loved. Yeah. Love others. and But but if they don't receive love <laughs> right. in the way that you're doing, then you could just be wasting energy and they're mm -hmm. like, let me give you these flowers. Well, I hate you. And, <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, that book, actually, the, uh, the nephew of Gary Chapman, the author of that book, mm -hmm. went to my church in in uh, Georgia. So I know that. Oh, his wow. Name. So I'm practically famous. But um, <laughs> but I looked this up because the last time I had looked, this was true, and it's still true, that that book has sold more books each year than the previous year for 26 years. So that book is still doing great. And people still need these five lung love languages because there's a lot of misses there and a lot mm -hmm. of misconnects. But, but love on the cross 
you know, that stands out because nowhere on the love languages does it say, and then there's the sixth one, I'll die for you, Mm -hmm. you know, die for me, die for you. But the cross is, that's what Jesus did. He died for us. And so the cross um, does so many things, but one of the one of the aspects of, about the cross is that it is, um, amazingly, it's that place where we, sh- we should see a symbol and emblem of God's love for us, hmm. which is amazing because it was originally um, just a, a horrific, torturous execution right. uh, tool, instrument, but it now stands up as this, like this big emblem that God loves us. So, um, so knowing and feeling God's love, the, the love of God on the cross. Um, did you ever, like, did, did you ever have that feeling of, like, it's strange to wear a cross? Did anybody ever say, like, this is kind of like wearing a so electric yeah, chair? on Right, right. Um, okay, it's funny that you bring that up because I went to Italy, I think, a few years ago, and I took a picture um, – took all these pictures in, in Rome and was like, you know, a lot of this stuff is biblical. And yeah. I, but I did take a picture by the Colosseum and I'm like smiling. And then I was like, wait, this is kind of morbid. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like yeah. people died here, um, yeah. you know? And right. I think the cross is a symbol of love. Yes. But a symbol of hope. And mm-hmm. I think I've mm-hmm. never had an issue wearing it but i can see how people you know might think that yeah. um and and i do notice that at one point it was like a part of fashion was to to wear crosses and so it was like okay the intentionality behind these certain designers might not be there but my thought is the cross is still a message of hope so even if they're distributing this cross yeah whatever their what reason they're wearing it it's, it's, i mean it now it still is what it is it's a symbol yeah all right but it's funny because i have a yeah. tattoo on my um forearm i'm i'm so sorry to anyone who's anti-tattoo <laughs> i know that <laughs> of a cross you've got a cross on your forearm <laughs> yes but it says his on it so yeah. but you know youtube viewers this will be more uh easily distinguishable for you guys but it's a cross and it says his on it saying that i am his i belong to christ right but the cross somehow looks like a t yes so it looks like my tattoo just says this oh this and there's no explanation for it i just let people think that and go on with my day but if they ask me about it i'll tell them what it says i just know that i'm walking around with a random this on my forearm so, you know, this. <laughs> yeah. Feast your eyes. <laughs> Feast it's your this. Eyes. Yeah, um, so I've been watching Deal or No Deal Island. Okay. I don't know if you've caught that yet. No. But um, it, I'm here for it. <laughs> but one of the contestants on Deal or No Deal Island. Wait, that's like the mix between Survivor and Deal it, or No Deal. It is. That exactly. is a crazy concept. Okay. And, and Boston on. Rob is on. I don't know if you know who Boston <laughs> I have is. no idea. Famous Survivor villain. Oh, wow. Um, okay. But uh, so the this contestant she, she was frankly kind of not a very nice person to, mm. but she came out at this key moment where she was going to play deal or no deal with crosses that i swear were eight inch large crosses hanging off of her ears and i thought i don't know what that's meant I don't to know. do there but <laughs> i don't know how i feel about that somehow yeah. it, it uh but you're right it still represents um what jesus did and mm-hmm. and but people yeah they can use it superstitiously um I do remember being a little kid and like walking around the house in the dark, you know, with a cross. <laughs> <laughs> you run up the stairs really yeah. fa- You turn the lights off and run up the stairs really fast so that no one can get you. Yeah. <laughs> I did do that. Yeah. So don't Holding catch you. the cross. But, That's awesome. But there's, there's the cross. So how is the cross an emblem of, of God's love? Do you think about it that way? Um, I do, because I think, you know, if we go back to those five stages or five um, yeah, love languages. languages, I should yeah. say, I think dying on the cross is the act, ultimate act of service because it's sacrificial. Um, 
And there's so many ways to feel loved and to love other people through sacrifice, mm. whether it be sacrificing your time to lend a helping hand, mm -hmm. to help your neighbor move, to help what have you. Mm -hmm. you. You're sacrificing your time. You sacrifice your resources. We do it every day. Right. Um, right. To help other people feel loved and, and receive that in return. And I think this is the ultimate the ultimate sacrifice because, you know, where would we be without God's grace? Yeah. Where yeah. would we be without forgiveness and and with with a debt looming over us that we have we're never gonna be able to repay. Yeah. But he did. To know he that we're stuck in our sin. Yeah. He paid it all for us. Yeah. So I do view it as a symbol of love. And, and it feels that way when you look at it? Yeah, it it feels joyful. I think if I just look at the cross. Now, if I look at a crucifix, okay, that's a little different for to me. Think because think about the pain of... Yeah, I think about his suffering. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's, you know, growing up in the Catholic Church, crucifixes are everywhere. Right. Um, and looking at a crucifix is almost like there's reverence and and sadness and grief still right and i think it's like you're at the trauma of the death yeah and and tying it back to easter is kind of like a reminder of the joy and the hope mm -hmm. that comes in the morning right yeah um he's risen from the dead yeah and he's yeah. alive he's alive today he's living yeah in us and through us and for us um so i don't know what about you do you think of it do you have complex well, I will say, um, so I grew up in a church that was not very clear about the gospel and about uh, sin and a relationship with Jesus. And mm -hmm. so my faith really um, grew, really was blossomed through, uh, through Young Life Ministry. But one memory that I have from that church is being in the sanctuary, and there was a big cross up in front of the sanctuary. And I remember as just a little, little kid, having this sort of like, I don't want to say vision because that sounds a little stronger than what it was, but I, it might be a vision. I remember it really well. And, but the feeling was like I was up out of my seat. It was like an out of body and I hugged the cross and the cross hugged me. And, wow. and I just, I don't remember if it was a dream or, I mean, just, but I can, I can picture that. So that's I, really cool. So there's all kinds of ways that people use the cross. Like they, the Celtic cross has got a circle in the middle of mm -hmm. it, and that's uh, symbolizing how the love of God embraces the whole world. And so I think the cross brings me joy. I mean, whenever I, um, I see that someone has placed a cross. You know, we went to the Colosseum, Abigail and I, while we were mm -hmm. on sabbatical. And it was my first time to the Colosseum. And uh, over the gates of the Colosseum now is a cross because the whole Colosseum belongs now to the Vatican. So this place where Christians were killed is now this triumphant place of, mm -hmm. of the overcoming of, of the gospel. But I think um, when we talk about the word love, you know, we tend to think of it as like a gauge that's going on inside of ourselves. Like, do I love you? Let me check. Like, I'm going to check my emotional gauge mm -hmm. and think about, um, am I feeling love? That's, I think that's the primary way that we think about love. But for God, it's, um, and for us, there's different levels of this, but uh, we, th we think, okay, I, I love you, I'm committed to loving you, but I never quite love you the way that you need or the way that you deserve or the way that I would like to in my ideal self. But for God, God loves perfectly, and God loves completely, and there's no distance in his character between what he intends to do and what he actually does. Um, so love is, is action, um, and love is God's, uh, the cross is God's loving action to save us. And I think when we sort of get those categories in our mind, we look at the cross a little bit differently, and, and we can see Jesus' death on the cross as that action, that, that, that committed act um, of love that mm -hmm. isn't just, so it isn't just sort of, I'm sitting across from God, if you can imagine that sort of thing, and I'm, I'm like, I'm, I wonder how God feels about me. 
God's love is an action towards me, and it is ultimately displayed in the death of Jesus on the cross. So there's this Romans 5, 6, and 8, I thought, is a good verse for us for this theme. You see, at just the right time when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So that's the the love of God on the cross is this um it's this active it's this act of love mm-hmm. you know yeah. yeah yeah and i think it's there's so much magnitude to it you know people die for each other all the time right firefighters policemen yeah soldiers what do you think makes jesus different and yeah yeah and it's, yeah, it's, you know i'm my answer would be the magnitude of it's for everyone for every generation. Right. Not bound by time. Right. Um, yeah, I remember being, you know, early on in, in my, like in young life, in my early on faith, I could I could almost come to tears just by someone saying Christ died for you. Hmm. And um, I mean, I probably still could. Um, as we all should, you know, be, that's pretty emotional. Mm -hmm. But just like Christ died, Christ gave his life, Christ gave his life. And, and later on, and I was more exposed to, um, yeah, firefighters who died, policemen who died, soldiers who gave their life in combat to save another soldier. I mean, you know, after a while, as a chaplain, you know, I'd done a few funerals and and um, and then you kind of say, yeah, people die for each other all the time. What's the yeah? What's the big deal that Jesus died, uh, died for others? Um, but it's so much more than that. Mm-hmm. Like you're saying. Yeah, I mean, also Jesus, God became a human. Like he right. <laughs> he became a man. Something so minuscule in the grand scheme of all creation. Yeah. Right. Like. There are so many things that we, as the human race, haven't even yet discovered in right. the whole universe of creation. The news had the some like there's a new star that's in the sky. Last this was on the news last night. Okay. So, yeah. So and they were showing um, this graphic about this star, and I guess it was like two. I'm do, do a terrible job at this, but uh, <laughs> you got it. Like a red star and a nebul I don't know but but <laughs> <laughs> I'm but, tracking but it was spinning it was spinning off a new star it was like this light is now hitting us of this and this is how it happened in this new star and it's in this galaxy that I'd never heard of and it's, you know umpteen miles away mm-hmm. and it's just, like it's so vast out there mm-hmm. was what I came away with I mean it just it's 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 extraordinarily extraordinarily vast and you're right God who made all that uh, became a uh, an infant became a human being, somebody who could be beaten, mm-hmm. you know? I mean, coming through Easter, I always think about that, that God, that Jesus was spit upon, that Jesus was beaten. He was, and God chose to to be that mm-hmm. when he d- it didn't have to be at all, you know? So there's this episode of Yellowstone. Mm. I'm, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the show. I am. Ish. Oh, yeah, you, you were we've wearing all the endorsed, colors. Um, we've already endorsed uh, Olive Garden, Chili's, and Deal or No Deal Island. So, <laughs> so now we're on to Yellowstone. Now we're on to Yellowstone. So this, this one is definitely PG-13, this episode. Yes. So there is <laughs> a character named Rip in it mm. who, I know this is silly, but in my brain I made this c- connection. Mm. He has been like the head ranch hand for years and years. And at one point, John Dutton, who owns the ranch, asked Rip to let his son beat Rip in a fight. Uh. So that 
So his son would have confidence. His son would have confidence and have respect and all of these things. And so it's like Rip humbled himself and mm-hmm. became right nothing and dirt and moved back into the bunkhouse even though he had the power to absolutely destroy this guy, you know, which like Jesus, not the same, (laughs) definitely not the same. Well, but you try to find these analogies, right? Right. Because it's, it's amazing. It's, um, it's huge. It's, it's bigger for us to, it's too big for us to understand. So, but any analogy doesn't quite, quite get it there. Mm -hmm. Um, So if someone, you know, if a non-Christian or a friend, said to you, why is Jesus' death different? This might be too big for us to take on in the 25th minute of the mm-hmm. episode, but yeah. <laughs> why Why is Jesus' death different? Do you have, what, what would you say? Like, it's like I, a, a police officer died last week or something, you'd say, and so why is Jesus' death different? I think he, he died for all, mm. um, whether they believed in him or not. Mm. Um, Right. I think I think that there's just a magnitude and a mystery and a wonder to you know the veil between heaven and earth and yeah. um I don't know, I'm kind of dumbfounded right now. I don't know how to Yeah. answer that question and I hate that I don't know how to answer the question well, no, and now I'm getting no. prideful. No, no, don't. I mean, I think I feel it's, like I need to prove something. <laughs> no, you don't have to prove anything. But we, I mean, we I remember actively time, revolted against God, and he still chose to die for us, whereas, yeah, like, yeah. Um, well, I mean, I guess in a police officer, to play devil's advocate, um, a police officer might die in, you know, protecting someone that he doesn't know or literally trying to stop someone from hurting himself like a criminal yeah and that's how they lose their yeah there's there's yeah but that yeah i think that's (laughs) i mean i remember in in like an animated uh how would you say sort of aggressive christian mode that i was in Mm -hmm. where i really i like i wanted like you said about people wearing crosses like you just wanted to come up and like do you know what that means (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but you bear you bear the cross. Act yeah, like it. Yeah. And, well, yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. Do you have any idea? You just see people wearing it for fashion. Mm-hmm. Like, you have no idea what that means. <laughs> but there's um, there is a meaning to it. The the love of God on the cross, a visible sign, a monument, forever of God's love, um, reminder of that day. I remember, you know, you think of that verse that Jesus said. Uh, I will be lifted up, and when I am lifted up, all people will come to me. And and he's he's suspended, he's lifted up in between heaven and earth on the cross. And and now this horrific instrument of death is like a vision of God's everlasting, standing, uh, visible love. It's like arms outspread, mm-hmm. uh, ready to to love you. And and that should make us. Um, grateful should grow our love for God and also as ever should be an impetus for us to love others you know love people love people and if God loves people that much to send his son to die on the cross then we should be inspired by the cross to love one another too Mm -hmm. that about sums up our time thank you so much everyone for listening and if you're enjoying conversations like these on faith and life then please leave us a review so that more people can find us. And we'd love for you to join with us in this conversation. So if there's a topic that you'd like us to discuss, send an email to podcast at firstprezcos.org. Or if you're watching the video version on YouTube, leave a comment below. And we'll look forward to seeing you in the next episode when we discuss career and calling. All right. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in two weeks.